to the next. Okay. Yeah, so you can actually start with her, hey? <laughs> She's my main mainstay. She gives me an egg a day. And she's the leader of this three. They're all females. There's no, well, there's a rooster on that side. Are, are we live? Yes, we're live. We're okay, so the, the concept here is to sustain during COVID. These pallets didn't cost me anything. They were on the site when I got here. I've been on the site for a year. It's a small holding. And these pallets became available and I, I tie them together. So they become sturdy once they're connected. And the chickens have been laying eggs here. We're on day 100 and plus now. They've been giving me eggs for every day of lockdown, even, even during, during bad weather. So this is one way to sustain. And um, there's some other chickens on the other side, which I'll tell you the story about later. But at the same time, we grow from seed. We grow seedlings. We um, have to have the right soil and whatever. And there's a connection between the two systems because the chickens eat these, these, these seedlings. We call them microgreens. They extract everything they need and they give us beautiful eggs. So that's one system. System is a closed loop. So the chickens are a closed loop, and I'm gonna take you now to another closed loop and perhaps do a little demo. So we're gonna go back by a few meters. So if you can pause and I will reappear at another place just over there. We have to put in the grass right in. Here. No. It's officially the golden hour and one way in which I like to in, to spend the day as the day folds away like a tent. I, I sit here with the chickens and I am watering the compost pile. It's just been turned today and I gather my thoughts. <coughs> my name is Benson. Welcome to my channel. The guy that was working the pile is a pal himself. His name is Andrew Rubain. He first got drafted into the gangs of Ocean View at the age of 13. Multiple times he's been in and out of jail. Um, you will find him trying to sell uh, things that he gleans from his activities as a bin picker. <clears throat> um, I bet you figure out what my what my role, my, my role was and today we found it. I'm very happy to have found it. He would work for two hours, maybe once or twice a week. And then every now and again, it took him a lot of courage to ask me to take him to the drug dealer. I told him I've got no problem taking him to the drug dealer, but today I had a problem. <coughs> because he's not buying drugs for himself. He's buying drugs to support his kids. So, I changed the plan today. I paid him a little bit more so that he could catch a taxi home. So that I wouldn't be complicit in the situation of having to transport drugs and we the conversation was worth noting I know there's a few of you that live for these moments but I could safely bring up the topic with a person that lives off the proceeds of crime how much money do you need to survive so that you don't have to do this and I was blown, blown away by the answer because he'd already worked it out. In fact, he pulled out a piece of paper and he said to me, I need a once of 4,000 rand. And with that, I will buy shoes. Got a contact. I will give you details <coughs> of Andrew Rubain in another yeah, opportunity. But I'm just so thankful that my tide has turned, that I can safely hold the high model ground and not just speak from the model ground and say, I don't do drugs and I don't 
And I think essentially drugs are not good, but it didn't, didn't have to come from my side. He knew it. So we're going to venture into a business plan of getting <coughs> Andrew Rubain on the straight and narrow economically. If you, see, if you see yourself being part of this, join us.